In our top story, China's political advisers are gathering in Beijing for a key annual meeting. More than 2,000 members of the 13th National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference are due to hold their first session on Saturday. They'll discuss proposals on the economy, politics and social development with lawmakers from the National People's Congress. Meanwhile, about 3,000 NPC representatives are scheduled to open their annual session on Monday. They're tasked with electing state leadership, discussing constitutional amendments and deliberating the government work report. The political gatherings are collectively known as the two sessions. Well, people across China are paying close attention to this important event. Let's take a look at some of their expectations. I hope the two sessions can introduce more significant policies for better housing conditions and living environments. I hope our salaries can increase and earn more income. For us citizens, we all wish to eat and live better. I hope China's medical security can be better and the education system can be perfected. I think in the next few years our work will be changed with more technology. Compared to the past, now we have to make full use of the Internet and data to bring convenience to the people and also to manage transportation more efficiently. I wish the defense forces of our country can be stronger and our country will be more prosperous. I hope the vacations of Chinese traditional festivals can be a bit longer so that I can be with my parents for a longer time, which can help increase enthusiasm for my work. Well, the two sessions have also drawn international attention. Let's hear what foreign officials have to say. The Belt and Road Initiative proposed by President Xi is a good idea. Indonesia also has a strategy to build a maritime power. The initiative can also help Indonesia to develop its maritime infrastructure. The next few years are crucial to China. The two sessions are very important in terms of facilitating domestic development and international exchanges. I'm looking forward to seeing how China will promote further cooperation with other countries, including African and Arabian nations. I am as an international reporter. I will talk about reflect the desire and the sweeping desire to make uh, reforms and to develop China in everywhere. And this will give a big chance for development and to achieve the great uh, Chinese dream in 2020. And this is give. Uh, image that China and the Communist Party are insisting to combat corruption and uh, conduct their uh, commitments in the last meeting. Well, let's bring you some African perspective now on the two sh sessions. I'm joined here in our Nairobi studio by Rafael Obonio, an international relations expert serving on the board of the Global Diplomatic Forum as also, uh, and also representative to the World Bank's uh, Global Coordination Board. Rafael, a pleasure to have you with us. Now, indeed, Thank you so the much. two sessions are being closely followed well beyond China. Why, in your view, should the world be paying attention to what takes place over the next two weeks? I think uh, the world should be paying attention for various reasons. I think one is uh, China's global leadership. You know, China is not just China. China is a global leader. And so whatever is happening in China and whichever, whatever is happening with China concerns or rather affects the rest of the, of the world. So that's, the, that's mm. the first reason. But the second reason is that this, the, the two sessions are going to reveal government priorities for the next one year and more. Mm. And so uh, other, other, other countries and other continents wants to sort of uh, assess and analyze whether the priorities that have been identified uh, sort of affect them, supports their, mm -hmm. their progress and development. Mm -hmm. And these particular sessions, uh, I mean, the two sessions also uh, sort of provide uh, China's vision uh, for uh, economic development and a sort of um, global engagement, and mm. so it's extremely important. Well, I mean, as you say, of course, China has positioned itself as a global leader, one mm -hmm. that has forged close ties with Africa over the past few years. Mm -hmm. uh, what, in your view, should African leaders and policymakers be looking out for uh, in these two sessions? I, I think uh, African leaders should be looking out in terms of uh, what are the priorities that China has come up with and uh, issues of uh, uh, investment. Is China going to invest more? In, uh, in Africa, is China going to uh, engage more with Africa? In, uh, in, in 2015, when um, the Prime Minister met African leaders in, in South Africa, he promised to, to sort of in, uh, invest 
more resources into development in uh, in Africa, their engagement with uh, with Africa. So African leaders will be looking to see truly are they matching their their their, their words with uh, with with Action. actions? Because mm -hmm. if it is not spelled out during these two sessions, then it becomes very difficult for China to actually implement any program that is not actually spelled out during mm. these two sessions. And of course, as we know, China is already Africa's largest trading partner. Do you think uh, questions around trade and investment with Africa will come out of these uh, two sessions? Oh, certainly, and most importantly, you see, because uh, uh, like you rightly put it, China is now uh, the, the, the leading uh, trading partner for, for, for Africa. And so the question is, will that continue being the case, or China wants to look uh, Look, uh, look elsewhere. Is China going to open up a few more? Uh, mm. I mean, more market, expand markets for uh, uh, goods coming from from Africa. Or what is the new, the new approach? And so, African leaders will be really keen to see what are the outcomes of uh, of the two sessions, mm, yeah. and whether it favors them or uh, actually puts them on the sidelines mm, again. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, uh, Rafael Labonio, in studio with us. It's giving us some perspective, African perspective, on what we can look out for in the two sessions.